Welcome into the Michigan football report. We have passed spring practice for Michigan football. It is over and now I am giving you my inside look at what I think the 2019 Michigan football offensive depth chart will look like at all positions on the field. New offensive coordinator Josh Gass, a lot of changes coming. So I'm going to break it all down for you and this is what I project it's going to be in game one. So don't be coming at me with the P DPJ is injured, that stuff for this step chart. My name is James Yoder, the undisputed king of Michigan football media. Let's get into it. But before we do, you see I'm wearing a tie there. You see this tie? What's the tie for, James? Why are you wearing a tie? Because Yoder means business with this offensive depth chart. If you want to know a little more about what that business is, go check out my Twitter account right now, Friday afternoon. Tweeted it out, behind the scenes video of what Yoder means business about. So go check me out, at James Yoder. No, no, no T anymore, at James Yoder on Twitter. Let's start off with the Michigan football quarterback position, the most important position in all of sports, not at Michigan necessarily, but just on a field. Shea Patterson projecting him to be my game one starter, although I don't think the job is his forever and his no matter what happens. I do think he will be under scrutiny all summer long to see how he puts in work all fall camp. He is very tightly contested by Dylan McCaffrey, told that those players were neck and neck all spring for that starting quarterback position. You see Shea Patterson's stats last year. Certainly not eye-popping in this new era of passing college football with guys throwing 50 touchdowns in one season. Shea, good completion percentage. A lot of those were easy check down passes. 2,600 yards, 22 touchdowns, and seven picks. A lot of his passes downfield, though, he really struggled to hit guys in stride. Certainly something he's going to have to work on this fall to lead Michigan to the levels that some of you are expecting him to. And who is the man that is giving him a run for his money? Dylan McCaffrey. No, uh, no uh, new name by any means by any Michigan fan. Everyone knows Dylan McCaffrey. A lot of hype around him coming in. Kind of coming in right after they got Brandon Peters as a big recruit in 2016. Him coming in the 2017 reclass. Six foot five. You know, a lengthy player, not uh, not certainly built uh, very big, certainly not built, built as big as Joe Milton, your number three quarterback. You see the starters there, sure, the, the depth chart there. Shea Patterson won. I've got Dylan McCaffrey, kind of like a 1B, but uh, the graphics department couldn't figure out how to put 1B instead of QB2, so we're sticking with QB2. And then Joe Milton is your QB3. What about Brandon Peters, yo? I don't see him on there. Don't expect Brandon Peters to be on the team next year. He'll, he'll graduate from Michigan in the next couple weeks and from everything we've been hearing he will depart the program as a grad transfer with two years to go at another school will be eligible immediately next year so I want to know from you guys assuming Shea Patterson is the starter and let's also assume many of you don't assume this I'm gonna assume he's the starter for all 13 you know scheduled games assuming they make a bowl game not counting potential playoff etc how many touchdown passes will Shea Patterson throw for in 2019. If you think he's going to lose the job, I guess you put like two or three, right? I'm going to go on with this. He's going to keep the job. I mean, put maybe Michigan, maybe they beat the Big Ten Championship game, maybe they play 14 games, whatever it is. I'm going to go for about 32, 33, uh, up from his 22. I jumped, you know, you know, bit off a little too much to chew last year. I was projecting, you know, Shea to throw 35, 38 this year. Uh, I do think in this Josh Gattis offense, Michigan will throw about another 10 times a game, so more opportunities and certainly better play calling in the red zone. So let me know in the comments section below to the YouTube audience watching, thank you for continuing to grow us. Comment below how many Shea touchdowns will Shea Patterson throw for in 2019. Let's keep this bad boy rolling to the running back position. A position that is missing a guy a lot of you thought would be the starter, Chris Evans, academically suspended from the University of Michigan earlier this year, back in January, did not participate in spring ball. Some are saying, myself included, he might have a chance to return from the, to the program in the future if he gets back in academic standing. We'll have to see how that plays out. But right now it's Christian Turner. Uh, got some play playing time down the stretch due to the new freshman rule. Looked good uh, on one play that got called back in, uh, in the bowl game early on for Michigan. Some speed. He was the guy getting the most carries uh, throughout spring ball. Zach Charbonnet, the big time recruit, uh, coming in was not getting the amount of carries that uh, that people thought he was because he didn't participate in spring ball. Came in injured, had to have surgery. They're kind of keeping it under wraps of what the, the, the injury was. I don't want to speculate on that at this point, but he did not participate. One of eight early enrollees for Michigan. So a lot of those guys making waves. Eric All, tight end, Mike Sainristel, some others getting their names in the, uh, in the headlines from Jim Harbaugh and some of the practice reports sprinkling out. Uh, I don't expect Charbonnet to, to get the job from day one, 
but I certainly think he is one that, you know, much like Mike Hart back in 2004 and some others, by game four, five, six, you might see him getting more opportunities, more opportunities. He, uh, he capitalized on those, and then he becomes your starter. But for game one, I get to be this man. Christian Turner, uh, going to be a redshirt freshman. True Wilson, I think he's going to still be a big, big, big part of the game, especially with Michigan passing more. He's certainly a better blocker, uh, more proven blocker, than Turner or Charbonnet are, at least at this time. So that there are your running back depth charts for this 2019 Michigan football team. Shout out to all of you subscribed on YouTube to the new Michigan football TV YouTube channel. Thank you very much for subscribing. If you haven't, if you found us some other way, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Or if you're watching the Sports website, youtube.com slash Michigan TV, the best URL uh, maybe on the planet at this point. Michigan TV, you are watching. Thank you to all of you who have subscribed. Let's keep it rolling. To the, tire, to, the, to the fullback depth chart, two guys that you are walking in a back alley, these are the guys you want going with you because they look crazy, guys. The fullback position is going to be de-emphasized in this offense, and that's why you've seen both these players, Ben Mason, Ben Van Summeren, taking reps, a lot of reps, at other positions. You're going to see Ben Mason getting the two deep on the defensive line, crazy enough, and Ben Van Summeren, you, you saw him, he's going to be in the running back rotation, not just a blocking fullback. You won't see Michigan using that you know, uh, fullback lead blocker as much as they have in the past. So these are the two guys, although I think you see this position on the field probably only maybe 15 or 20% of the players throughout the year. So there's your fullback depth chart. Take it over to tight end. I put out uh, my projections for Michigan receivers and tight ends, you know, catches and yards the other day, and some of you just couldn't handle that I didn't put Sean McCune on the list because I think this man, Nick Eubanks, we saw a glimpse of him early in 2017 down the field, making it happen, not, you know, short arming balls or dropping passes like McCune has been known to do. I think Nick Eubanks in this, oh, Tom, what was the word we called it again? A pro tight end, whatever the term was. Uh, a move tight end, gets outside of the tackle box, doesn't line up with his hand on the ground. When he is in the game, I think it's mostly going to be out, almost like a, a huge slot receiver like Gronk. Eubanks fits the role, had a much better spring, uh, in my opinion, from what I've heard, than Sean McCune, and then you'll see Mustafa, Mustafa Muhammad also built in that Eubanks mold of going down the field, kind of a bigger, a little slower slot-wide receiver. Those will be the guys. I think McCune will be the one in there on a more true running uh, formation for the University of Michigan football team. All right, want to ask you guys, if you haven't already, follow the new Michigan Football Report Instagram page. I got some really good content. I put a couple of my best scoops of the spring on that page of story. I think we went from you know, 100 followers to 600 or so in a couple weeks with very little promotion other than this show. So appreciate it. If you haven't yet, once I get to 1,000, if we can do it before Thursday, I'm still committing to giving away those two tickets to the Rashawn Gary NFL Draft Party. So go ahead and follow at Michigan Football Report on Instagram. Keep it rolling. The wide receivers, what everyone wants to talk about this spring. I'm projecting Nico Collins, as you see there, as the number one wide receiver in this new Josh Gattis offense for Michigan in 2019. Why is it going to be Nico Collins? Well, one, I actually think he's the best receiver on the team at this point. Certainly didn't help that, uh, you know, uh, DPJ and him were out in the spring. But I think down the stretch last year, you saw him as the go-to guy for Shea Patterson, the guy who didn't, I think I saw a stat, he didn't drop a ball that was thrown to him all season that was within catching distance. That's crazy. Six foot four, six foot five frame. He will be getting those deep uh, and outside the, the hash mark passes from uh, Shea Patterson or Dylan McCaffrey. DPJ, I put him as you know, the, the wide receiver too here, but I actually think they're going to run it with him and Black and Collins. He's going to be like a slot in the Michigan offense of the past where he's not going to be outside the hash marks as much. Tariq Black will be that guy. And then Oliver Martin, uh, all these guys in that 2017 recruiting class, all in their third year in the program. Oliver Martin, impressing in the spring, certainly a little more sure-handed, getting more opportunities than he would in the past. The Michigan offense will have a base four wide receiver set from, you know, that's their base set. So you'll see that out there a lot. You also see guys like Mike, St Mike Sainer still, Giles Jackson in there, getting some reps in the slot. Ronnie Bell, you know, outside the, outside the hash marks. Uh, then we've got Cornelius Johnson coming in, big time recruit out of the East Coast. And then Nate Schonel, uh, a player that I doubt will get many reps because in theory, he's kind of like your six wide receiver uh, in that, uh, you know, three wide receiver setup. So that is your depth chart for the Michigan football wide receivers. I expect some big time numbers out of DPJ, Nico Collins, and Tariq Black going into this year. So want to 
throw it over there, kind of talk about who are the guys returning from the team. Every, every year you've got uh, you know, guys who, who leave the program coming in. Nico Collins, Donovan Peoples-Jones, without a doubt, by far and away, the top two wide returning wide receivers as far as production. Both of them, you know, under 50 catches, 47 and 38, but about the same many yards. And you saw why I put Nico Collins as my number one guy. Nine less catches, about 25% or so less catches, but still had more yards than DPJ because he was able to get those 20, 25 yard uh, passes down the field, jump up over the DBs and get those balls. He is Shea Patterson's go-to guy in my opinion, but does my opinion matter? Well, clearly it does being the king of Michigan football media, but yours matters just as much being a watcher of the king of Michigan football media. So let me know in the comments who will lead Michigan in touchdown catches in 2019. Got a lot of you know people throwing out different names in. I would have put this on, uh, on Twitter a few days ago. Want to know from you guys watching here on YouTube. Comment below who's going to lead Michigan in touchdown catches in 2019. All right, the big... Uglies are next. The, the Michigan offensive line, Ed Warner tweeted out today that this is the one of the best offensive lines he's had and that the first time in his 30 some odd years of coaching, he said that every offensive lineman that started the spring took every snap given to them, meaning there was no injuries, nobody sat out at all any, uh, any of the plays that they could have. So a perfectly healthy offensive line, knock on wood, going out of spring, hopefully making it into the fall all very familiar names to us, four starting offensive linemen, including John Running Jr., who I, I, I give you my opinions. I didn't think he was the guy last year. Proved me wrong in some regards with, uh, with an all-Big Ten nomination. He's going to be your starting left tackle again. Ben Bredesen, uh, I think a four-year starter now for Bredesen. Uh, Cesar Ruiz, a third-year starter there at center. Michael Onwenu, those are your four returning starters on the Michigan offensive line. And then my guy, Jalen Mayfield, you know, he didn't come through like I, I predicted last year. No, uh, no, um, you know, slight on him. Michigan is a true freshman. Very difficult to come in and uh, and start as an off as a true freshman on the offensive line. But after this spring, in a spring that many said Stuber and uh, you know Andrew Stuber and Jalen Mayfield were going neck and neck, I think by the time the summer comes around, another four or five months of uh, time in the weight room, Jalen Mayfield will be your starting right tackle. And there is your offensive line depth chart. And the question is now to you, the Michigan football fan. Is the man ball, you know, that was a term that people used uh, you know, during Brady Hoke's era, but it really hasn't changed that much with Jim Harbaugh. Is the man ball era of Michigan football over? Are we, are we, are we gonna see a modern offense for the first time, you know, I, maybe ever, I don't know, maybe Michigan had the modern offense back in the 90s and they started going pro style. Certainly well behind the times now. Answer in the comments below. If you answer yes, that means we're gonna see a modern offense, you know, is man ball is dead. Type Y for yes, type N for no. I think yes, but I still am kind of in that, you know, got to see it before I believe it uh, mentality. So go ahead and answer below and also make sure you follow me on Twitter. If you, you go to James T. Yoder, you're not going to find me. I got the name at James Yoder, so follow me on Twitter. We will be back next week with the Michigan football defensive depth chart. So make sure to subscribe to the channel to see that next week. Hey there, Michigan football fans. Thanks so much for watching the Michigan Football Report. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. We've got Michigan football news, rumors, recruiting information, and inside access to the Michigan football program. You ready for another Michigan football video? I got you hooked up right here. Go Blue.